Welcome back, uh, where we have a familiar face today and someone new that we uh, like to welcome. First, Steve Concialdi, happy uh, New Year Thank to you. you. Happy New Year. Good to see you. And introduce, uh, you're Darren Johnson, and you are an inspector? I'm an uh, investigator? Ins no, fire inspector oh, with the inspector. Orange County Fire Authority. Oh, I got it right. just got promoted today. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Senior fire inspector with the Orange County Fire Authority. Congratulations. <laughs> it's uh, good to have you here and welcome. Thank you. And uh, we're going to get to get with you in just a moment about a very serious subject. But first, let's talk about a very nice subject, and that was the uh, Spark of Love campaign that really all the firefighters in Southern California uh, are uh, a part of. We've got some photos here, and it's just it's a wonderful thing. Right. Really we want to thank your residents, too. They brought hundreds and hundreds of toys to your local fire station here in Laguna Woods and Laguna mm -hmm. Hills to Station 22, I mean, for days. So this is another station. This is Station 24 in Mission Viejo. But you could see all these people just coming in droves to donate toys. And there were a couple of hundred thousand toys. I mean, we are still collecting toys today. Wow. It is amazing when we get the final number. But there's 350 different agencies in Orange County that distribute these toys to children in need in Orange County. So these, these toys that are donated to the fire stations throughout mm -hmm. Southern California then get distributed to Orange County children. The ones that get, yeah, get you that know, is in great. Orange County stay in Orange County. That is really, and so it's, they're, they're, it's still ongoing now. Well, there are as so many toys and there's, we have a <laughs> huge great. warehouse and they just keep being distributed. So what'll happen is some of these toys then next year, because a lot of times these agencies have to collect the toys before Christmas, mm -hmm. and we receive so many toys on the 24th, the 25th, and then the week following Christmas. Yeah. So next year, these children, there's gonna be toys for them too. So they get placed, all these volunteers, I mean, there's hundreds of volunteers that work there. They get placed in large bins per age for a boy or a girl okay. from zero, zero to three, three to five, so forth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, and they get shrink wrapped and, and protected. And the next year, an agency will come and say, "Okay, I need uh, thirteen thousand toys for five-year-olds. I need fourteen thousand toys for this." And then they're given to them. So it, it's amazing what happens. That's great. And so, if somebody wants to donate beyond, uh, like right now, can they still do so? Right. They could drop off a toy at any Orange County fire station. Anytime. And we would happily accept them. That's great. Good, good for you guys. And uh, this was started years ago by uh, ABC Channel Seven, and uh, it's it's just and, a great and we thing. set a record it here is. in Orange County. So we do once a year stuff a bus at the yes. Honda Center, a record twenty seven buses. That's incredible. Were filled. I mean, that is uh, OCTA buses. They're they're a partner as well. Yeah, twenty seven buses on one day in Orange That's County. That's incredible. Uh, it is. So now, Darren, we're going to turn to uh, a, a much more serious topic called hoarding and uh, besides being uh, one of the uh, on the Orange County Fire Authority you are also on the Orange County Task Force on hoarding yeah and let's first talk about we got some just remarkable uh, disturbing pictures actually what is defined as hoarding we all I think most of us you know we collect a few things in there you know I I might do, um, do a project at home and think, oh man, I got these extra little pieces of wood. I may use these someday, so I'll put them in a, in a bucket somewhere. And uh, that's one part of it. And, but I have a little area, it's nicely done. Correct. When at this point where it goes way beyond just keeping something you think you might use to something like this, and, and what is the cause? Right, uh, hoarding is, um is a serious uh, problem mm -hmm. for uh, for Orange County uh, due to all the shows that have come out, hoarders and yes. uh, with A and E and everything. Yeah. Um, it's it's brought a light to to a, mm -hmm. a, a subject that uh, people didn't know what it was before. You're right; people have too much stuff in the box. Right. Um, but there gets to a point to where, as you can see by the pictures, it hampers our efforts to uh, to to rescue you in your time of yeah. need. Or it hampers our efforts to service you, um, our, our men and women with the Orange County Fire Department, uh, who who are critical lifesavers. Uh, you know, they need time. So when they run in and open the door and see something like that, 
um, their time is hampered uh, to, to properly service you. Um, and then, you know, worst case scenario, if you had a fire, mm -hmm. uh, there's just too much stuff in the box. And uh, obviously, the, it would propagate fire more, more rapidly and put everybody at risk, uh, not only the, the homeowner, but the surrounding community um, and, and the first responders. Uh, and hoarding is, uh, is basically defined levels one through five. Mm -hmm. uh, one mm -hmm. being not that bad, probably our house. Yeah. <laughs> Level two, uh, a, little bit, a little bit extra. Level three, now maybe some of your exits are starting to be compromised. Level four, um, your exits are blocked. You, you can't get okay. out of the house. And, and our first responders can't get in the house. Mm -hmm. uh, like, like some of these. Correct. Yeah. And, and then right. a level is just... five is all of that plus... Um, some some health hazard stuff. Uh, it well, could obviously, be. we're looking at these photos here. Yes. And beyond, you know, you have the the top two, but the bottom ones, we're looking at people's kitchens and refrigerators. There's obviously old food here. Tremendous Correct. amount of mold. Correct. Bacteria growing. Correct. Even the it's, even uh, uh, the yeah. refrigerator is still on. This is open. It is a problem, and firefighters are a lot of times the first ones to see this mm -hmm. because we respond on a medical aid, right, um, or a fire or so forth. But a lot of times it's the medical aid, and then we turn these over to Darren and mm -hmm. his task force to give them the proper help they need. Now, Darren, although uh, the Orange County Fire Authority may not delve into the What's going on with these individuals? How come they're at this point? This is a, sometimes classified as a, as a disease. Correct. Being that you're on the task force, do you work with uh, some of the local other agencies that are in yes. the area? That's what the task force has done. Okay. The task force um, has, before the fire department used to go out and say, oh my gosh, look at this place. Um, it's messy, it's a fire hazard. Here's your notice, see you later. Yes. Um, we'll come back in two weeks to check up on you. Now being part of this task force, the Orange County Fire Authority has resources beyond uh, your imagine. I mean, mm -hmm. I have the Orange County Health Department, Adult Protection Services, Child Protection Services, um, Animal Control, the Orange County Sheriffs. Um, we are all now a collaborative group who come together where we all only do our one little chore, but we make sure that the whole um, project is completed by everybody. And we're very successful mm -hmm. um, because of our collaboration. Um, we are not, uh, you know, I, we are the Orange County Task Force on hoarding. Um, we don't ride on the sides of vans and jumps off and run into people's mm -hmm. homes. Task Force sounds dirty. Um, but uh, what we are is we're a group of people that collaboratively come together to help others. And I want people to understand that our goal is not to come out and not to embarrass you and, and, and not to highlight you. And, and um, we just want safe living. Mm -hmm. um, one of the biggest concerns uh, is multifamily living, where your wall connected to another wall, you know, you could cause uh, great harm to others, mm -hmm. uh, not understanding <clears throat> what hazards are in your home. Do you find that hoarders like this, so when it gets to this, uh, gets to this level here, is it usually, is there a certain age group? Is it people, a demographic group that may live alone or income group? You, you know, they're, they're really, um, yeah, I could tell you that we run into probably 50 to 70 is kind of the group, mm -hmm. um, but all ages, um, both men and women, mm -hmm. children, um, it really is non-discriminate, um, and, and, uh, but we do find the, the, the older generation has more stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> or, um, you know what, they came through the Depression, mm -hmm. and at that time, they couldn't have stuff. Mm -hmm. So now that they can have stuff, they get it, and they get yeah. it in droves. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed over my years of doing this is that a lot of times I run into the youngest child in a large home. So um, lots of brothers and sisters, and all during their lives, they got hand-me-downs. They got mm -hmm. their brother's pants, they got their brother's toys, they got their brother's everything. Well, they never got anything of their own. And now they're, they are of age to take care of themselves. They kind of overdo it a little bit. They mm -hmm. go out and they get their own stuff. And, and they don't just get one, they get two. They don't just get two, they get four. Mm -hmm. And um, it, But it, it really runs the gamut as far as uh, age, men and women. Well, I've even heard of people uh, that may be very well off and they, they order from uh, online sources or QVC or things like this. And as you said, they'll order three or four of the same thing and it Well, they're on the, sale. Yeah, the boxes aren't even opened. Right? Correct. It's but just they get that package and they right. love it. But these are also 
very successful people, mm -hmm. doctors, professional, wow. professionals, teachers. We were talking about attorneys and so Rocket forth. Rocket scientists. I mean, you know, when, when I do this um, and I go out and I first meet somebody and, and I try to build that rapport so they understand that we're not there just to, mm -hmm. as enforcement, um, these are incredible people. Um, they're very smart. They know what they're doing. Um, they, they just have a little bit of an illness that, that, mm -hmm. that, uh, that makes their brain think a little bit different than ours. Yeah. And uh, they, they, they have a collective nature. And sometimes those collections get just a little out of control. And so we just kind of bring it back in control. But these people, for the most part, are very friendly. Um, and they are very intelligent. And uh, although come from all walks of life, um, there's a lot, of, a lot of teachers that I run into where they just never want to throw away all their kids' successes. Mm -hmm. So they, they keep these successes and they, they store them in their garage and in their house. And then, you know, they were a teacher for 40 years. So they have 40 years of stuff mm -hmm. and uh, times 32 children in each room. Yeah. So it, it, it does add up. And I, and I think they understand uh, the value of, of collecting all that stuff. But what they don't understand is that the hazard that they're causing by having so many uh, combustibles in, inside the, the yeah. house. And that's the thing, combustibles. And as you've talked about in the past, one of the biggest hazards is these folks may have extension cords going all right. under that is buried by right. yes. a mountain of stuff. Uh, and we get fires in here. Yeah. And our job is to go rescue you. And it's very difficult when we have s such a large fuel load in there mm -hmm. to try to get you s safely out of there. Yeah. As well as the medical aids. I mean, there's rats and mice and what, yeah. disease one, one in of there. My, one of my main jobs is not only to protect the community and protect that person that could be the hoarder, but it's to protect our staff, our mm -hmm. first responders, our firefighters, our sheriffs that, yeah. are, that, are, that are going into mm -hmm. these homes first. Um, and, uh, you know, there was, uh, there was a city here in Orange County on, on a Thursday, I, I told the, the people, uh, I said, listen, if, if you continue to live like this, uh, you're running the chance of, of fire mm -hmm. and you're running the chance of putting your community at risk. And uh, I'll be doggone that, that Saturday, um, uh, they both passed away in a fire. And one of the reasons they passed away in a fire is because our people could not get in to effectively do their job in a timely manner and they couldn't get out. So we want to ensure that you mm -hmm. have the ability to get out in your time of need and we have the ability to serve you in your time of need. And uh, when you have this much clutter, it hampers all of us. Yeah. And the neighbors, the neighbors are affected too. Of course. Uh, you know, when I, before you started talking about this, if you asked me what do you think a hoarder is, I would, I would guess someone who was much older, who went through maybe the depression or something like that, especially when it comes to food. They have a little bit left in you know, the, the jelly jar and they go, well, I don't want to throw this away and they put it in there. We, we all do that to some respect, put it in the back of the refrigerator, but they keep every little thing that they think they might be able to use, particularly when it comes to food and if they're on a low income. Uh, but the way you're explaining it, it's just, it, it goes and far beyond. It's, it's all funny that you just what? see the jelly. Yeah. See, I see the jar. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Right. So once I'm done with that jelly, I'm going to wash that jar out and I'm going to repurpose that jar yes. to hold coins. Yes. And I don't have any coins right now, but I've got 30 jelly jars and yes. one day they're going to be full of coins. Mm -hmm. And now I got 60 jelly jar jars and, and, everything, and everybody goes, well, you know, glass isn't a fire hazard. Why can't he keep all those jars? Yes, but it does hamper our efforts when it becomes clutter yeah. and it doesn't allow you the ability to get out uh, in the event of an emergency or it doesn't have, you know allow us to get in to help you yeah it's kind of like your desk when you have so much stuff piled on there it's hard to focus and think and you get overwhelmed mm -hmm. and it, it it just grows this started small and these things have all sure. grown like this all right well uh great information and uh we'll We'll uh, get more on this subject uh, one time. Maybe we'll just do a, a whole segment on it or a whole half-hour show or something because, uh, as you can see, we can get on somebody from uh, one of the other agencies and uh, really get on talking about this. And I would even suggest at one time get with uh, uh, one of the clubs that are here and come by and... Uh, you know, do a yeah, whole, uh, Orange, Ho Orange County do a whole thing and a it. whole has some great resources. Yeah. All you need to do is tap into them. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And they can call the fire authority. We'll gladly help. help them. All right. We had snow right. in Orange County uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, last week or so and uh, very close. I live up in RSM and uh, it was just literally up in Robinson Ranch. That's how close it was to us in here uh, up in Holy Jim Canyon, which 
although it would be a long walk, is really a, lo a walking distance from our house. And part of the problem was we had a lot of trees that went down. And uh, due to the fact that, well, these trees were kind of brittle right. over the years, they weren't getting a lot of water. And this, this is really a tiny, tiny snow load for, for if you looked mm -hmm. at the rest of the country, they'd be laughing at us, but it was enough to really cause a lot of this problems. This was amazing. So the U.S. Forest Service and the Orange County Fire Authority went out there um, because there's about 45 homes in the Upper Tribuco Canyon, yes. the Horse Thief Canyon area, mm -hmm. as well as the Holy Jim Canyon. A lot of those are seasonal cabins, mm -hmm. but there are residents that live there year round. Yes, they do. Yeah. So um, because of the storm on the 30th, it was not only just the snow, but it was the wind too. These drought stress trees, we've had the drought for a few years now, mm -hmm. um, they're saying close to 400 or over 400, either large trees or large limbs and branches came down. So this, these actually blocked the road leading to Holy Jim Canyon and Upper Tribuco Canyon. Mm -hmm. So the residents were going into work that morning, they couldn't get to work. Other um, people that were going out to their seasonal cabin couldn't get there. So the U.S. Forest Service, um, one of their fire engines asked for our hand crew to go out there. So our 22 hand crew went out there on New Year's Eve and mm -hmm. worked four hours to clear the roadway. I mean, it was an amazing task. And what happened was just the wind and then all the snow on, you could see it on mm -hmm. these branches. Because of the drought, we had these trees going down and branches going down. It was an amazing sight. Because I, I was out there in Robinson Ranch, I could not believe the snow out there. Yeah. Which was incredible. Uh, but the U.S. Forest Service now, they have a task force that's going to be going out there and assessing the whole area because some of these trees fell on cabins out there. So okay. it, it's going to be an ongoing issue that they have to deal with. But, but again, our drought is not over. And so as we get into fire season and, mm -hmm. and really right now, yeah, we've had some rain and everything. It is extremely dry out there still, mm -hmm. and we could still get a fire. So in, in Southern California, because the climate we live in, we could have fires year round. So right. this is just, this is showing you how dangerous it is. This is snow and, and the damage it did to all these trees. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, um, uh, as I said, just close to where we live, probably around where you live, you might've gotten a little bit too. and. I, I was just amazed mm -hmm. by it. I, just looking out and to see it at that level, I was probably like 12, 1300 feet. Right, they were saying down, down to 1200, which is beautiful. It we was beautiful. And they said, it we was. haven't had a storm like this since 1967. Wow. Which was amazing. Yeah. So, but it, really, it, it was gorgeous. Um, you want to get into uh, another kind of a sad note, and that is the amount of drownings there were in 2014 and sadly the numbers were up right right yeah so uh this this past year in 2014 we had 85 drowning incidents throughout orange county mm -hmm. 41 of those unfortunately were fatal and that's just a, a tragic number and again all of these so i get contact on, on all of these they're preventable every mm -hmm. single one was preventable and what what's alarming is it really affects the older community as well as the younger community yes. so in these 41 fatalities 19 of those were people that were 50 years or older that that is it's it, staggering but what it was is the common theme was they were by themselves mm -hmm. they were in a spa a pool somewhere close to a body of water and nobody else was around so they either tripped they were either in, in the water swimming or relaxing and had some sort of medical problem and nobody was able to help them. So very sad. And then the yeah. kids, uh, even though we only had three fatalities of the 41 that were, were anywhere from like one to four year olds, we had 31 incidents. Wow. And that is, and so a lot of those did suffer irreversible brain damage. Oh, it just, it happens in seconds and without a sound. There's nobody yelling, screaming, nobody knows until it's too late. Yeah. And then the reason we talked about this, just before Christmas Eve, a three-year-old in a backyard pool, and the family went over to visit <coughs> some relatives and uh, they couldn't find the three-year-old. They frantically looked throughout the house and eventually they went to the backyard where we oh, always, gosh. if you cannot find your children, you have got to head towards the pool. There was no fence, no barriers. So that three-year-old, which they love the water, they're attracted to the yeah. water. And he found that water and unfortunately he died right before Christmas. Oh, so, uh, you know, let's hope uh, we get 
let's hope we get no numbers right. in 2015, and, and that's what but we're, at least far less. You, you've been so good to educate your viewers on this, and uh, I know it's helping because we've had so many people that have done CPR that, that have saved lives. Mm -hmm. And the more education, we're, we are definitely saving lives by talking about it. Yeah, definitely. Um, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure having you on. Of course, a couple of these subjects were not pleasant, but um, let's, uh, let's end on the note that uh, the spark of love was great and that you yes. can still help out. And uh, both of you have a good new year. And we'll see you again in a month. And Darren, good to meet you. And as I said, maybe we'll come up with like a, a, a you know, a whole 30 minute show or you, you can get in contact with some of the clubs here and uh, come out and do a presentation with some of the other, uh, the other uh, available Orange County. Yeah, the task force is always willing force. to do that. Yes. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you very much. Thank and uh, we're gonna be, uh, we've got a couple minutes left. Uh, all right, we're gonna go to a break and then we'll be uh, right back.